Welcome to another lesson in the TI30X Plus MathPrint series. In this lesson, we take a look at a number of ways you can determine the approximate area under a curve. We'll start with a simple function, f of x equals x squared, and consider the area bounded by the curve, the x-axis, and the line x equals 4. A very simplistic approximation would be to create a triangle with one vertex at the origin, the other on the x-axis at x equals 4, and a third vertex on the function at the point 4, 16. The area of the triangle would be a half times the base 4 times the height 16, which gives us an area of 32 units. A slightly better approximation would be to use a series of rectangles. We need to make a choice. The rectangles could be bounded by the function on the left or on the right. We'll start with left bound rectangles, of width 1 unit. The height of each rectangle is defined by the function. Using the TI30X plus math print, I'll define the function f of x equals x squared. I could generate a table of values, but I want to be able to add up these areas. So I'll use a list. As there is only a couple of values to calculate, I'll enter the x values into list 1 manually. The first rectangle is determined by x equals 0. The second, x equals 1, then x equals 2, and finally x equals 3. The height of each rectangle can be stored in list 2. So I'll use a formula for list 2, f of list 1. Now I need to add these values up. I could add them up manually, but I can use the sum list command. And store the results in A. Now I can go back to the home screen, recall A, and there's our first approximation. 14 units. It's a lot less than what we got for the triangle, but our left bound rectangles are providing an underestimate. We could, however, make the columns a little bit narrower. We'll get a better approximation. This time, I'll use a sequence to generate the x values. The x values go in list 1. Now for the sequence formula. If I break the region up into 8 columns, the formula is simply x, starting at 0, and ending at 3.5 with a step size of 0.5. We can see the calculator has generated all the x values we needed. As the formula for list 2 is still active, the corresponding y values are also generated. So, Again, we can simply sum the values in list 2, but this time we need to remember that each column is only half a unit wide, so I need to multiply the sum by one half. So the approximate area is 17.5. We can see from the graph that this is still an underestimate of the actual result. So what if the columns were bound on the right hand side? Our estimate would be slightly higher than the actual area. We can make some small changes to list 1. We'll start by deleting x equals 0 and at the other end of the list we'll add in 4. The y values are automatically calculated. So we'll calculate the sum, but this time I'm going to store the sum in B. We'll recall the sum and divide by 2 when we get the approximate area as 25.5. Now, if we average the left and right bound areas, we could effectively change our rectangles into trapeziums. 
this gives us a much better approximation. This time we see the approximate area is 21.5. Let's go one more time. I'll use a column width of 0 0.1, a total of 40 columns. This time we get an approximate area of 21.34. Using integral calculus, the area is actually 21.33 or 21 and a third, so our approximation with just 40 columns is pretty accurate. So go ahead, explore some other regions or some other functions. That's all for this session. We'll catch you next time.